the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby, Ontario, plays host once again to another game in Major Series Lacrosse here in Whitby. As we welcome you into our coverage, Jack Moore joined alongside Andrew Osmond. And Andrew, a big matchup here today. The 1-8 Coburg Kodiaks come in to take on Brooklyn in this matchup. We're 3-4-1 and one on the season. And we take a look at that head-to-head -head matchup between these two teams. And Brooklyn has really dominated this matchup so far this season. They definitely have. And two of their wins came against Coburg. They hold a 2-0 record this year against those Kodiaks. And goals for 29 and goals against uh, just 13 for those Brooklyn, uh, the Brooklyn team over the Coburg Kodiak. So definitely kind of own the season series between the two. And two teams sitting at the bottom of the standings, uh, three and four in the MSL. But, you know, between these two, there is a bit of a divide uh, just between them alone. Yeah, we, we take a look at the standings here in Major Series Lacrosse. Of course, just four teams this season, three teams opting out of the 2022 Major Series Lacrosse season. And Brooklyn's really in that spot where they've played Peterborough and Six Nations competitively, but just haven't come away with those one-goal losses. They had that one-goal loss on Saturday here against Six Nations. And then, of course, Coburg coming off that one-goal loss on Sunday against Peterborough as well. And then for Brooklyn, they, they, they may be third, as you see in the standings there, but they're just three points behind Peterborough, have a couple games against Peterborough to end the year, and another one against Coburg. So there is possibility here for Brooklyn to really get a couple games get some points, a couple swing games as well to really climb the standings and maybe get the second seed in the MSL. Yeah, the Coburg, this Coburg team has really been struggling as of late in Brooklyn, trying to take advantage of that. One of the key factors is Dyson Williams. Yeah, Dyson Williams, fun fact, we, sit, we learned today, changing his number to his father's 51 from the 15 he was wearing for the first part of the season, so he's changing that, and maybe that'll get to his legs a little bit today, and we'll see a couple goals. He does lead the team uh, in, the, in that category, but you know, maybe putting that 51 on his back is just more inspiration here tonight. He, of course, he does wear number 51 at Duke and now wearing it with the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club here in Major Series Lacrosse. Of course, his dad, Sean, wearing that number, having a historic lacrosse career. We'll get more into this game just momentarily, but first, here's our national anthem. It's supposed to be a stormy night outside, so we bring you inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center for Major Series Lacrosse action between Brooklyn and Coburg, and we take a look at tonight's starting goaltenders, Andrew. And first up for the Coburg Kodiaks, you're looking there at Steve Orlman. He's got the lone win on the year for the Coburg Kod Kodiaks, and he sports a 7.66 save percentage uh, and a 13 goals against average. You can see his record and the numbers right there, and he'll take the nod tonight over his brother, Kevin, who will be on the bench backing him up. And on the other end for Brooklyn, it's the usual starter, Riley Hutchcraft. He's 2-0-1 on the year and sports an 11-76 goals against average and a save percentage of 800 even. Riley Hutchcraft, of course, having some movement in the National Lacrosse League. He'll be backed up by Ryan Schukowski. No Nick DeMood in the lineup for Brooklyn here tonight. So Ryan Schukowski on the bench for Brooklyn should anything happen to Riley Hutchcraft. And we are underway here. Coburg kicked the ball right off the faceoff. So Brooklyn gets the first offensive possession of the game. And Peyton Cormier will set up in the offensive zone. Austin Murphy worked it off to Ryan Lanchbury. Back to Murphy, steps around the defender, plays it off the corner, looking for Peyton Cormier, and it got taken away by the Kodiaks' Doug Utting. Nick Ellerton now sets up in the offensive zone. 
Alex Simmons into the corner. Cam Milligan, the captain of this Coburg team, who's also the team leading scorer, fires a shot that goes wide of Riley Hutchcraft, bounces into the penalty boxes, and it will be Brooklyn ball. Brooklyn trying to get a quick restart there, but Nick, or sorry, Ryan Barnable unable to catch it on the fly. So they'll get a standing restart. Kyle Waters will bring it up the floor. Peyton Cormier rips a shot. Steve Orlman makes his first save of the game. Pass down the floor gets picked off and slowing things down is Brooklyn. Now a pass inside looking for Dyson Williams, but that pass gets picked off. And Coburg's back up the floor. That shot gets fired wide as well from the Kodiaks. So again, Brooklyn getting the restart, and Chris Willman brings it back up for Brooklyn. A quick shot by Lanchbury, and that gets stopped by Steve Orlman again. So Brooklyn really trying to get things going quickly when they get into the offensive zone, not using the full 30-second shot clock, electing to take shots early and often on Steve Orlman. Riley Curtis setting up in the offensive zone for Coburg. Keelan Pilon off to Curtis. Pass cross floor and the shot gets blocked. Good job by Jacob Saunders getting in the way of that one from Chris Weir. Now Austin Murphy into the middle and that shot goes wide from James Whiteford and bounces into the stands. It'll be Coburg ball. Yeah, you said it there, Jack. Uh, Brooklyn not taking advantage of their whole shot clock here as we got a couple uh, couple whistles to slow things down. But yeah, no, Brooklyn going hard here and trying to take advantage of the Cobra Kodiak's recent struggles. Five straight losses and I believe haven't been able to score more than six over that stretch in any game. So really trying to get out ahead quickly. A quick pass to Ryan Barnable as he steps in and Steve Orlman makes yet another save. So getting tested early and often just over two and a half minutes into this first period. Steve Orlman letting his team know that he'll be giving them some help in between the pipes. Now that shot on Hutchcraft goes wide. Jackson Webster was looking to convert, but he missed the net. Now a chance for Brooklyn, and Orlman makes another save. Chris Willman on the fast break for Brooklyn. Tyler Halls drops this one off and gets it back from Ben French. Cam Milligan fires, and oh, nice save there by Riley Hutchcraft. Went past his leg, but put his stick between his legs to catch it, trap it, and get Brooklyn back the ball. Yeah, nifty save there. A little unorthodox from Mr. Hutchcraft over there, but makes the save and then gets the ball up the floor. Ryan Lanchbury off to Kyle Waters. Waters stepping around the defender looking for Lansbury. He gets tied up, 10 seconds on the shot clock, and a violation against Kyle Waters will give Coburg back the ball. Good defense there from Coburg on that last Brooklyn offensive possession. And Keelan Pilon will restart again for the Kodiaks. Alex Simmons plays it to Justin Lee. Now Pilon back up top for Simmons, steps around the defender, shoots and scores! Alex Simmons gets things started, four minutes, 15 seconds into the first period, his eighth on the year, it's one nothing Coburg. And that's the start they're looking for after Brooklyn with all the pressure. It's as you said, Alex Simmons with a lot of time and space just to the right of your screen. You'll see him here, makes a couple of fake shots and then eventually goes over the shoulder of Riley Hutchcraft and opens the scoring here quite early on in the first. So a big start from Coburg and the Kodiaks get the offensive possession on the ensuing faceoff. Alex Simmons who's been a bright spot offensively for Coburg this season and in our head-to-head -head graphic you saw that they've only scored 63 goals that was their 64th of the year Simmons now on 14 points on this season for Coburg as John LaFontaine brings it back up the floor Ryan Lanchbury 
Second overall pick in the 2021 NLL draft to the Georgia Swarm. Plays at Richmond, elected not to play in the NLL last year and finish off his senior season at Richmond as Peyton Cormier steps in and another save by Steve Orlman. He's looking for the ball there for a little bit, finally found it and plays back underway. Alex Simmons, lone goal scorer in this one as Keelan Pilon picks it up. Back to Simmons. Simmons looking for Lee, takes it himself, and Hutchcraft got a piece of that one and knocked it away. Hard body check there by Justin Lee. Jacob Saunders took the ball away for Brooklyn, and Saunders sends this one down the floor to avoid the eight-second violation in his own half. So instead of getting the ball in Brooklyn's end, Brooklyn got some fresh defenders on the floor, and Jordy Jones-Smith finds Mike Byrne on a fast break. He's got Dyson Williams. Mike Byrne shoots, and Steve Orlman kicks it into the meshing. That's a couple times now. Brooklyn's on the rush. Maybe has a three-on-two or a two-on-two even, and I feel like every single time they've elected to shoot on the rush instead of drop it back to the trail guy or cross, cross crease. But uh, that's just kind of been the... The status quo so far for Brooklyn on the rush, just get that shot on net and even try to go five hole, it seems to be so far. Kyle Waters was driving to the net and stepped in the crease, so Coburg ball. And even on those two on ones, you have Mike Byrne, who on this season doesn't have a goal, so you can really have two thoughts about that one. Is he going to pass it off to the team leading scorer in Dyson Williams, which everybody expects him to do? Or is he going to keep it himself at three on two as LaFontaine goes cross? floor for Barnable, but the pass behind him gives Coburg back the ball. They must have heard me because they're, they're trying to make a pass, but maybe one too many on that rush. Just make that one pass and then get the shot on net. Joey Zabo gets things started, and the defender will make his way back to the bench as Justin Lee comes back onto the floor for Coburg. Lee driving towards the net. Defenders draped all over him and works it off to Ben French. French to Simmons. Simmons up top, and that gets stopped by Hutchcraft as the rebound out in front. Pilon picks it up, and a violation against Brooklyn right in front of their own net. So Keelan Pilon will get the restart in the corner. Cam Milligan works it off for Jackson Webster. Milligan gets it back. Milligan stepping away from defenders. Sharp angle shot, and that gets kicked away as well, and now a fast break opportunity for Mitch Wild. In alone, Mitch Wild off the post. Great chance there for Mitch Wild, but he couldn't convert. He beat Steve Orlman, but not Iron. That's not over and back because of the restart after hitting the post. So Brooklyn able to get another offensive possession here. Dyson Williams flips it off to Peyton Cormier. Less than half the shot clock left, looking for Williams out in front. It finds Ryan Lanchbury in the corner. Now Austin Murphy. That shot gets blocked, and now Lanchbury can't control it in time to get a shot away at the end of the shot clock. So a turnover there by Brooklyn. Steve Wallman continuing yeah. to play well in net for Coburg early on in this contest. And Brooklyn not shy of putting those shots on net. And the Coburg goal is actually only the second time this season that Brooklyn's given up the first goal of the game. John LaFontaine with Ryan Barnable up the floor. Barnable looking to shoot. That one missed the net. Elected to shoot instead of wait for his teammates on that one. Missed the net entirely, and now Riley Curtis sets up again. Cam Milligan. Gets the screen from Justin Lee, and that pass was behind Webster. Webster able to corral it with 10 on the shot clock. Pilon steps into the middle, gets checked. Now works it into the corner, and that's going to be a time count violation against Coburg, so some good defense yep. there by Brooklyn. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, great defense from Brooklyn there, just all over the ball carrier and the ball handler and not allowing any passes really into the slot, keeping the ball to the outside. Ryan McCrory with the help defense there to force that turnover as that shot from Kyle Waters goes wide. Dyson Williams avoids the over and back. Nice pass to 
Ryan Lanchbury in the corner. Just two seconds left on the shot clock, and Lanchbury had to play it in behind Oralman. So another empty offensive possession for Brooklyn here as we approach the midway point of this first period. Brooklyn forced the turnover at mid-floor, so Barnable finds Dyson Williams off the bench. With speed to the net, Dyson Williams put it wide. That ball bounces into the crowd, and that'll be Coburg ball. And 10 minutes, 10 seconds into this first period, we'll get our first water break of the game. Heat definitely a factor here tonight, Andrew. Yeah, not just for the players, but let's say us as well up here. We're, we're sweating. We got a lot of, you got a lot of water bottles, actually. You're, you're stocked up, ready to stay hydrated, but so are the guys here on the floor. You'll see all of them grabbing a drink here with the heat and all this stuff. But we'll, we'll take a look at the last play here coming through. That's Dyson Williams cutting towards the net, trying to get it on net. He does and just misses on the far side. And then the ball, as you can see here, bunts out of play, and that's where we sit now with that water break, but still one nothing here, just over halfway gone in the first period. As we take a look there at your leading scorers and look at the top, it's Mr. Williams, as we just said, 29 points on the year, 17 of those goals, and then also Milligan on the list as well from Coburg, as you said, one of the bright spots on the year for the Kodiaks. Definitely getting some help there from their captain. In terms of scoring, Cam Milligan coming into this game. 11 goals, 17 assists for 28 points on the year. Justin Lee sets up in the offensive zone for Coburn. Alex Simmons couldn't get it around LaFontaine as that shot comes on and Riley Hutchcraft makes another save. John LaFontaine will bring it up the floor. Zach Sunderland off the bench and Ryan Lanchbury will set things up for Brooklyn. Dyson Williams into the crease and missed that shot as Steve Orman got big and Williams couldn't find the corner as it went out of play, so it'll be Coburg ball. Ben French. Steps around McCrory into the middle. That one goes towards the net. And the net came off before the ball went in. As French was going hard to the net, he stepped in the crease anyhow. So it'll be Brooklyn ball. That's as good. we take another look at it here. And you'll see it just coming from into the crease here. The ball, yeah, never crosses the line. And then a couple players push that net off and we get that whistle. Austin Murphy gets some space and Steve Orlman makes the save. A violation coming up against Ben Doherty. So that will remain Brooklyn ball in the offensive zone with a fresh shot clock and Peyton Cormier into the middle nice pass and a better save by Steve Orlman Brooklyn picks up the offensive rebound another fresh 30. Peyton Cormier walks in Cormier to the net and he scores. Peyton Cormier cuts to the net and ties the game at one with 8.13 to go in the first period. And Cormier's had a couple of good looks so far, and on this one here, he's going to cut towards the net. He's going to take that little pick play, and then he's kind of all alone there in front and just gets the ball up and over of Orlman's right shoulder and ties this one up at one. Third on the year for Peyton Cormier. Big body for Brooklyn. Six foot one, 230 pounds on the offensive end of the floor, picking up speed, driving to the net. Tough one, tough player to get the ball away from is Cam Milligan trying to respond for Coburg here as they have 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Milligan rips his shot and that gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. Loose ball in the offensive zone for Coburg and Simmons couldn't find it, but he got knocked down to the ground by Zach Young. His helmet came off and it will be Coburg ball in the corner in the Brooklyn zone. Ryan Lansbury picking up another assist on this season on that Peyton Cormier goal. So his 15th of the year now up to 26 points. So just three off Dyson Williams for the team lead. Ben French finds Alex Simmons. 
He's double teamed by Brooklyn's defenders as that shot goes wide right to Ben French and Hutchcraft makes the save on that shot. Oh. Penalty coming up here to Covert. So Riley Hutchcraft off to the bench. Six attackers on for Brooklyn trying to get one here. If they don't, they will head to the power play for the first time tonight. And it's going to be Alex Simmons to serve that penalty as he interfered with uh, the play in the crease. Dyson Williams fires a shot that goes wide. It gets picked up by John Kitt. And Alex Simmons will trot off to the penalty box. So for the first time tonight, there's a power play. It goes to Brooklyn in a tie 1-1 game with 6.46 to go in the first period. Yeah, and you're looking at it here, and he makes the play. You can see the defender's feet still in the crease, and he's interfering with all of that there. And he looks back instantly at the official saying, I didn't do anything, but he clearly did. And he interfered, and that's where we sit now with the first power play of the game going the way of Brooklyn. Get the penalty up on the board, so we get our restart. Brooklyn with a fresh shot clock. And a two-minute power play thanks to Alex Simmons. As Ryan Lanchbury, Dyson Williams, Peyton Cormier, Kyle Waters, and Austin Murphy on the floor. Steve Orlman makes the first save. Waters picks up the rebound. Cormier off to Murphy. Can't control the pass, but corrals it in the corner with eight to shoot. Waters to Lanchbury. Back to Waters. Orlman makes the save. Murphy plays it out to Ryan Lanchbury, and they'll say Austin Murphy's feet were touching the white line, so it's Coburg ball. Brooklyn's bench not happy about that one. Jackson Webster trying to kill off as much time as possible. Ten seconds left in the shot clock. Keelan Pilon fires a shot that goes wide of Riley Hutchcraft. So Dyson Williams will restart up the floor for Brooklyn and slow things down as Ryan Lanchbury will set things up in the offensive zone. Williams to Lanchbury. Now Murphy steps in looking for a lane to shoot. He got stopped by Oralman. Ball goes right to Lanchbury up top. 35 seconds left in the power play. Kyle Waters fires. Oralman makes the save. And it will just be a three second differential between the penalty and the shot clock. Or sorry, they reset the shot clock. So it's the same amount of time as the penalty clock here. So Coburg can close things out if they don't shoot and just hold possession. But Lee shoots and scores. I take a shorthanded goal over a 1-1 game five on five. Justin Lee's first of the season. Rips it past Riley Hutchcraft shorthanded. Covert retakes their one goal lead. Yeah, and a bit of a surprising shot. I don't know if Brooklyn really expected it to come. Just right here, a little step back into the center of the floor and then throws this one on net, nonchalant, and goes past the goaltender Hutchcraft. It makes it 2-1 for Covert. Byrne can't win the ensuing faceoff. Tyler Halls takes it away. One of nine call-up players for Coburg playing here tonight. 11 regulars for Coburg in the lineup, including their two goaltenders. And the clock never started once play ensued. They have to figure things out. I think Alex Simmons left the penalty yep. box after Justin Lee scored. Which, unfortunately for Coburg, that's not the way the rule works. <laughs> no, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I think he scored with maybe five seconds left in that penalty at least. And then I looked over and didn't see Simmons in the in the box. And here he is now walking onto the floor. Simmons is. So we'll keep an eye on the clock here. It looks like they might be having issues because they still actually have a full two-minute penalty on the board, which never actually started for Simmons. They will restart. It's five on five. Clock runs now. They took 10 seconds off. Alex Simmons fires a shot. Hutchcraft makes the save. And Brooklyn gets a big stop from their goaltender there. And another one from Hutchcraft that kind of trickles at his feet after making the initial stop. So having a bit of trouble keeping those rebounds in front of them right now. They're slipping through. Zach Sunderland 
Gets things set up in the offensive zone, finds Peyton Cormier. Cormier works this one off. Sunderland fires a shot that goes wide, and that's over and back against Brooklyn. Curtis Conley getting set up in the offensive zone with Jackson Webster, Riley Curtis now. Curtis finds Conley, his shot gets deflected and goes wide. Curtis gets it back and finds Simmons. Now streaking to the net is Conley, and he gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. And what a pass that was from Simmons, finding his man, cutting down the center of the floor with a decent shot on net. Can't really ask for a better opportunity, one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender right there. Kyle Waters working against Luca Romano as Austin Murphy takes it from Ryan Lanchbury. Murphy off to Waters. Now Dyson Williams to the net. Dyson Williams gets hit hard, taken down, and Coburg is going back to the penalty box here with 3.28 to go in the first period. So Dyson Williams draws the penalty, and Nick Ellerton will sit for two or less. And just as I was about to say, and give Coburg credit for playing Dyson Williams very strong defensively, they get a bit over aggressive on that one and get called for the penalty, but I think it's Dyson Williams realizing I'm not getting anything easy in this game so far. They're on me. They're not letting me get a step at all, so I, I got to try to take it through them. And by doing so, he drew a penalty. So we get another power play for, for Brooklyn. Ryan Lanchbury working it off with Dyson Williams, who shoots it, goes wide into the crowd, and it'll be Coburg ball. Just 12 seconds taken off the clock there for Brooklyn on that shot attempt from the team leading score. Chris Weir slowing things down. Finds Justin Lee, he scored shorthanded last time out. Now Cam Milligan. Works that one off for Keelan Pilon. Kicked out by Hutchcraft on the shot. And John LaFontaine will restart things here for Brooklyn. Ryan Lanchbury. Waiting for his offense to set up. Peyton Cormier, Dyson Williams, Ryan Lanchbury, Kyle Waters, Austin Murphy. Lanchbury into the corner for Murphy. Five to shoot. Dyson Williams behind the back, and that one got kicked out by Oralman, and he picked up the rebound as well. So not for the lack of attempts from Dyson Williams here tonight. Getting his chances, but Steve Orman's playing very well in the pipes for Coburg here tonight. And if you're Coburg and you're looking at Dyson Williams taking his chances and his backs towards the net when he takes the shot, you're going to take that every day, having Dyson Williams having to force a shot, not even facing the net. Brooklyn forces the turnover in their own zone. Just under 30 seconds left in the power play. Austin Murphy, Ryan Lanchbury out there again. Power play unit number one is Kyle Waters. Gets it back up top, Dyson Williams into the middle. Finds a shooting lane and scores. Dyson Williams, power play goal, ties the game at two with 1.35 to go in the first period. This just goes to the character of Dyson Williams fighting through trouble. The first half of the period wasn't really getting much looks and he draw, draws a penalty charge to the net and then gets rewarded for his persistence all first period here. Coming a bit late to tie this one up at two. Loose ball picked up by Nick Ellerton off the faceoff. So Cobra gets it back. We're tied at two. 90 seconds to go in the first period. Wednesday night at the Iroquois Park Sports Center here in Whippy. Major series lacrosse action. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond with you on Rogers TV Durham. Justin Lee has the ball knocked off his stick. Now Mitch Wild works that one off. James Whiteford finds Ryan Lanchbury. Less than a minute to go in the first. Lanchbury fires. That gets kicked out by Oralman. Lanchbury able to control that rebound. So Brooklyn gets a fresh 30 in the offensive zone. Lanchbury works that one off. Sunderland scores! 
Back to back for Brooklyn. Zach Sunderland rips that one home with 41 seconds to go. And for the first time tonight, Brooklyn takes a lead. And it looks like the momentum is starting to swing here later in the period. That's now a couple quick goals for Brooklyn to, re -get, to get the lead, I should say. They haven't had the lead yet this game. And a great play there. Do you see the excitement there from Dyson Williams as well for his teammate Sunderland? He's able to get them the lead here late in the first. Violation against Coburg. So Brooklyn will get the ball with 40 seconds to go and a fresh shot clock. So Ryan Lanchbury will set up in the offensive zone. Midway through the shot clock here for Brooklyn. Waters to the net. That one goes wide and hits the rafters above the net. So 20 seconds to go here, and Coburg will call a timeout to get things set up. The shot clock will be turned off as they go into the offensive zone, down by one and 20 seconds left in the first period. Yeah, Coburg's definitely, you know, it it's kind of the no-brainer thing to say, but they're going to want to try to tie it up here with the last 20 seconds. But not just to stay in the game and take advantage of your last 20 seconds and the possession here and using the timeout, but, you know, it's been all Brooklyn lately, so it's almost just to calm things down as we take another look at that goal just mentioned. And Sunderland, again, gets the pass and just throws it right on net to get us where we are. 3-2 for Brooklyn here with 20 seconds to go. Colbert still working on their timeout call and, and uh, drawn up a play there. Three goals for Brooklyn in this one. Ryan Lanchbury with three assists in the game. So moving that total up to 17, putting him at 28 points on the year. We've seen him with some good shot attempts, but continuing to prove why he's one of the best distributors in this league. Yeah, because he draws the attention with him and Williams on the floor. Either of them could be the shot maker at any given time, which opens each other up. You know, you can only try to cover one guy as tightly as possible, opens up the other player and forces the defense to really think about who they're going to try to target. Steve Orlman on the bench, six on five, shot clock turned off. Cam Milligan with five seconds left, puts it back up top. Pilon walks in, Hutchcraft the save, and that ball gets played off to the boards. Time expires on period number one, and Brooklyn, who is down by one, tied the game, down by one again, scores two unanswered to close out the first 20 minutes of play and take a 3-2 lead into the first intermission against the Coburg Kodiaks on their home floor. We will have highlights and analysis when we come back. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Everybody knows not to drink and drive, but some people still think it's okay to take drugs and drive. Police have the authority, the ability, and the tools to determine if drivers are impaired by legal or illegal drugs. And because drug-impaired drivers can pose just as great a risk as drunk drivers, they face the same penalties, like the loss of their driver's license, a criminal record, fines, and more. A message from the RCMP, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. Johnny, I wanted to go back home. It was a thousand kilometers away. They forced him to go to the Indian Residential in School. More than 150,000 of us children had to go. They wanted to change us. Our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Kill the Indian and the child. It's been called cultural genocide. I survived residential school. My brother Johnny did not. Chani Wenjak was one of thousands of children who died due to Canada's residential school system. More than 80,000 survivors and their families still live with its legacy today. Hello, I'm Rob MacArthur, host and co-producer of Helping Durham Region. 
Join us as we shine the spotlight on Durham Region residents that are making a difference by helping other residents. That's Helping Durham Region, only on Rogers TV Durham. Welcome back to Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. During our first intermission here in Whippy, Brooklyn leads Coburg by a score of 3-2 to two through 20 minutes of play. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond with you on Rogers TV. And Andrew, a first period where Brooklyn got down, they rallied back, and then down 2-1 late in that first period. Two quick unanswered goals gave them the lead heading into the second. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it was. And it was really Brooklyn coming out strong, actually, early on in the period, too, with a lot of pressure, a lot of offensive attempts, and a lot of kind of three-on-twos, two-on-one chances, and just weren't able to capitalize. Then it was Coburg getting the first goal of the game, which was a bit of a surprise, as that's only the second time that's happened against Brooklyn this season so far. But then, as you mentioned, the last couple minutes of the period, they really turned it around, and you know they were down, they tied it up, then they got the lead. And Coburg even had the last possession of the period and called the timeout, drew something up. They were able to fend that attack off and keep the lead. So it's, yeah, really Brooklyn kind of coming out strong and then struggling a little bit there to find their footing. But they, I think they've learned a little bit in that period and give credit to the coaching staff to make those adjustments that they made. And they got those two goals, one on the power play. And uh, that's, that's kind of where we sit now. And Brooklyn just, you know, looking to ride that momentum now into the second. We'll take a look at the highlights from that first period. And it was Coburg getting off early, getting the scoring started. But again, we mentioned it, Brooklyn staying with it and not letting the first period start to slip away from them after that opening goal from Alex Simmons. Yeah, there you have it, Alex Simmons, who then <laughs> eventually did get a penalty that didn't prove costly at first. But then we get a couple of nice saves here from Riley Hutchcraft, who's been making them a bit unorthodox, as you see here. A couple that he doesn't really, he's not sure of himself where it is at his feet. But here's a nice play by Peyton Cormier, cutting to the net, making a couple of nice moves and potting that one in to get back into this game. But then it was Coburg not giving up, not letting it go. And it was Justin Lee shorthanded just at the end of that Alex Simmons penalty was set to expire. And then it's the big guy, Dyson Williams, just taking control and drew a penalty before that one and then got the goal there. And then getting the lead there, Zach Sunderland getting that one there. And we sit now 3-2 after that period. 3-2 after 20 minutes of play. We'll have plenty more coming up for you in our intermission. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. Judith Tate, host and producer of At the Heart of Business. Join me each week as we get to know women in business and learn all about their challenges and successes. That's At the Heart of Business right here on Rogers TV. Hey folks, the BMD here. Don't forget to watch my new episode on our Rogers television show, Meet the Band, where we have young talent, Sonny Yu. Stay tuned for more. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. We can be hurt, we can be bruised, we can be broken, slowed down, confused, and even numbed. But we can't be defeated. We're built on a foundation that's strong, our mission unwavering, and together we'll beat as one. Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen, host of Photos and Travel, where we bring the world to your doorstep. In our next episode, we're going to visit the German state of Bavaria and travel along the Rhine, stopping at a fairy tale castle. Join us right here on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Constable Gerald Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Seniors Talk with DRPS, where we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region.
Welcome back to the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, Ontario. 3-2 Brooklyn leads Coburg through 20 minutes of play. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond on Rogers TV along with you. And Andrew, this Coburg team has really struggled as of late. They had a 10-8 win against Six Nations earlier in the season. And since then, things haven't been going well for this Kodiaks team. Not going well, not really going in any right direction for them, unfortunately. Five straight losses, haven't been able to score more than six in any of those games. They've lost two to Brooklyn, who they're facing here tonight, and they're losing once again. Just kind of struggled. The, the big thing for them isn't really the goals against. I mean, yes, they're getting outscored, of course, but it's the goals for that's the big problem for them. They're not able to put them in the net. That's, you know, the, what I just said there, not being able to score more than six in a game. You're not going to win many games scoring six goals. So that's really been the problem, and I don't know if it's going to be, you know, draw more penalties to, to get those power play opportunities to get those goals. Uh, but you got Cam Milligan, the captain. You got Alex Simmons, a couple other offensive threats that, you know, can score at, at times. And we've seen it here tonight from at least Alex Simmons so far, uh, one of the leading scorers. But but I'm not sure really, you know, where you go from here at this point in the season for Coburg. Um, they do have, as you mentioned, a bunch of call-ups that, you know, I thought maybe tonight, you know, lit a bit of a spark for, for Coburg. They got out to that early lead and then... Uh, Brooklyn tied it up and they got uh, the lead once again so maybe it's that spark they need just you know hey things aren't working let's get some new guys in here some junior A junior B junior C guys to fill some roster spots and really get this team going well and, and that's the thing right you, you have these injuries you have guys not able to play Brandon Robinson who's up there in team scoring of course he was a former OHL guy played university hockey at Wilfrid Laurier now playing pro lacrosse with the Coburg Kodiaks but unfortunately just one of those seasons for Coburg where everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong a roster of 18 players and two goaltenders and you have nine players from your regular roster and nine call-up players on the roster and they're only down by one against a Brooklyn team who's been very competitive with Six Nations and Peterborough throughout the course of the season. Yeah let's transition a little bit maybe some bright spots and some positivity for Coburg you just mentioned it there I have basically half the regular roster and they're in this game so far and they got the lead and, and kept the lead for a bit of the game as well. So that's a positive. Their one win on the year comes against the top team, Six Nations. And that's not too shabby if you were to ask me getting a win against the top team. Not many not many can do that night in, night out. So, so there's a couple of bright spots as well on the year as a whole. But you mentioned it. It's really those injuries and... You know, the lack of consistency with the guys putting in your lineup every night. You, you know, your power play looks different every now and then. Your penalty kill looks different. Your starting goaltenders might look different as well as we get the Oralman tandem in that. So, you know, with those injuries piling up, the consistency lacks, and you don't really build that chemistry and really give yourself a good shot at, at winning games. Well, and you mentioned it there, too. Not being able to do it against Six Nations. Six Nations sits atop Major Series Lacrosse in first place, which is one loss and one tie on the year. Their one loss coming to Coburg. Their one tie on this season coming against Brooklyn. So both these teams have got some momentum against that top team, and it's looking at continuing it. And for Brooklyn, it's really about carrying that momentum. We talked about it last week when we were here, when Brooklyn beat Peterborough. It was winning those gettable games against Coburg and then really trying to force the hand of Peterborough and Six Nations when you got into those games against the top two teams in the league. And that is something Brooklyn has definitely done. Yes, they haven't come out on the winning side of those games, but their last loss to Peterborough on one goal game. They got two losses to Six Nations in this, uh, this year, both of those one goal games, and they have a tie against Six Nations. So the two teams ahead of them, ahead of Brooklyn in the standings, they're in those games. They're not out of it. They're not counting themselves out. So don't look at, don't look too shabby on Brooklyn so far. The momentum is swinging. They're building that chemistry, and they're taking care of business where they can. And they'll hope to build on that here tonight. Ryan Barnabal takes it away to start this second period. Long change in period number two in Major Series Lacrosse. Goldberg takes it right back after Barnable couldn't find Austin Murphy coming fresh off the bench. Keelan Pilon works this one off. Alex Simmons scored the first goal of the game. Simmons works it off to Webster. Pilon looking for it. Loose ball and the shot clock will expire. So it'll be Brooklyn ball and the Brooklyn defenders doing a great job there, not allowing a shot on that Coburg offensive possession. 
Peyton Cormier. Works it off to Dyson Williams, gives the screen for Williams, who shoots. Steve Orlman makes the save. Loose ball picked up by Coburn. Luca Romano over the timeline and into the offensive zone. Works it off for Cam Milligan. Milligan, Jacob Saunders all over him, but continues to control and flipped it off to Ben French, who drives to the net. That gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. Ryan McCrory brings this one up for Brooklyn. McCrory into the middle, trying to find Kyle Waters. That one goes to the boards, and McCrory gets it back. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Brooklyn. Austin Murphy to Ryan Lanchbury, who has three assists in this game. Couldn't control it. Dyson Williams will just send it into the corner at the end of the shot clock, and it will be Coburg ball. All defense so far in the first couple minutes of this one. Both teams with a couple of nice possessions and shots on net, but a couple of late shot clocks on either end. Joey Zabo works it back to Alex Simmons. Riley Curtis. Worked it back up top. Simmons fires a shot. That goes wide. Justin Lee finds the rebound. Lee off to Simmons. That shot got blocked and picked up by Chris Willman. So a fresh shot clock here for Brooklyn as they bring it up the floor. Now Peyton Cormier stepping in. He scores. Second of the game for Peyton Cormier. Brooklyn takes their first multi-goal lead of the game. It's 4-2. Peyton, Peyton Cormier, when you're hot, you're hot. He's building the confidence today, cutting to the net on two occasions, both of them proving successful. A couple of nice cradles there, high above his head, keeping the ball away from the defender. And he's able to get it past Orlman and make it 4-2 Brooklyn. He had two on the season coming into this game, has two on the night for Brooklyn, and now gives Brooklyn a 4-2 lead here early in the second period. Three minutes gone here in period number two. Dyson Williams cuts in, steps in the crease. It'll be Coburg ball. Luca Romano. Working against Mike Byrne, finds Ben French. Elon, out of the corner, into the middle, finds the shooting lane, and Riley Hutchcraft finds the ball. Made the save, but Cam Milligan picks it up in the restart in the offensive zone with a fresh shot clock for Coburg. Cam Milligan shoots and scores. A big one there for the captain to end the scoring streak for Brooklyn at three and get Coburg back to within one. And it's Cam Milligan, as you'll see, he just cut, gets the ball and cuts to the center right in front of the crease. You see here he gets a nice pick play there from Simmons, who takes the defender away. You see right here, boom, that little push there with the stick and gets the defender away to really clear up that space for Milligan to get a clean shot on net. Violation against Brooklyn off the faceoff, but a turnover right to Ryan Barnable. Barnable will have to slow things down and wait for his teammates to come off the bench. Barnable gets the screen from Dyson Williams and works it off to Ryan Lansbury. Lansbury rips a shot and he scores. He was an assist machine to start the game. Ryan Lansbury picks up his first of tonight's contest. Two goal lead back in effect for Brooklyn. It's 5-3, four minutes into the second period. And for Ryan Lansbury, make that four, part of four goals out of the five. You see it here, cuts away from trouble and has a man in front, maybe uses that as a bit of a distraction here and gets that ball right past Orlman. 5-3 Brooklyn. Ryan Lansbury has been all over the offensive zone here tonight for Brooklyn. Having himself quite a game. And now picking up his first goal of the night as Lee fires his shot that goes wide. 
LaFontaine couldn't find it. Simmons into the corner for Milligan. Now French fires a shot that gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. Kyle Waters off to, Austin, off to Austin Murphy, who steps in. That gets stopped by Steve Oralman. Murphy had stepped in the crease, so he couldn't touch the ball, and Coburg will take possession. Dyson Williams now staying on the floor during this long change in period number two. Midfielder at Duke. We've seen him play some transition defense over the course of the season. And he picks up that loose ball and will bring it back up the floor for Brooklyn. Now off to Mitch Wild, who fires a shot that goes wide. One of the advantages of one of your best offensive players being able to play the transition game. Yeah. Pilon fires a shot and Hutchcraft kicks it into the meshing. I was going to say, not many players can make a pass like that running down the floor himself, sprinting at quite the speed and finds his man wild in stride as we take a bit of a water break here as we just under 15 minutes to go here in the second. The storm outside is brewing up, so the heat in here is uh, it's not exactly cold in here, Jeff. It's not cold in here on the coolest of nights in no. the summer, but here tonight, definitely a hot one as we take another look here and Riley Hutchcraft making another big save for Brooklyn that time, just getting that right padding down. Yeah, a good positional save there from Hutchcraft. Knows the shot's coming in, takes away the bottom of the net there with his right foot, just in line with the shooter in the right post. Fresh 30-second shot clock. Cam Milligan sets up in the corner for Coburg. Works it up top to Jackson Webster. Now Keelan Pilon. Pilon checked hard by Mike Byrne. Keeps possession. Now off to Ben French. Pass back to Simmons. Working against Barnable. Simmons to the net. Stepped in the crease. That one won't count. So Alex Simmons thought he had his second of the game, but he stepped in the crease a half second too soon. And Brooklyn's back down the floor. Peyton Cormier. Works that one off. Sunderland fires his shot. That gets stopped by Steve Orlman. A violation against Coburg. Coburg gives Brooklyn a fresh 30-second shot clock in the offensive zone. Whiteford's shot gets deflected and goes into the meshing and out of play. Yeah, and Coach J Jason Crosby was pleading that case from the bench and didn't get the benefit of the call. 5-3 Brooklyn with 13.35 to go here in period number two. Coburg with the ball in the offensive end of the floor. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Conley driving to the net. That gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound picked up by Ryan McCrory. He's back down the floor for Brooklyn. Ryan McCrory waiting for some help as Dyson Williams is fresh off the bench. Now here's Zach Sunderland. Sunderland gets a screen from Murphy. That's a violation, and it'll be Coburg Ball. That pass down the floor over the head of the intended target, Joey Zabo from Coburg. So Mike Byrne quickly back into the offensive zone with Dyson Williams. Peyton Cormier flips it off to Williams. Williams finds Austin Murphy. His shot gets stopped, and Steve Orlman will trap it in the crease. Work back up the floor by Coburg. As Ben French getting set up in the offensive zone. Riley Curtis off to Ben French. French getting checked hard, and that 
Ball forced loose by Chris Willman, and now John Lafontaine down the four. Two on O. Oh. Barnable to the net. He scores. Nice transition goal by Brooklyn. Ryan Barnable picks up his fourth of the year, makes it 6-3 Brooklyn with 12.06 to go in period number two. And I don't know if he'll get an assist on it, but it really goes to Chris Willman in the defensive zone. I don't know if we'll see it. No, unfortunately not, but that's okay. He made the defensive effort to get the ball back and then up the floor, LaFontaine, Barnable, two on O, and Barnable makes the call, takes it on the net, one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender, Orlman and makes doubles the lead now, 6-3. Carter McKenzie picks it up off the faceoff, and Ryan McCrory will slow things down here for Brooklyn. Austin Murphy flips it in, Sunderland steps in, he scores! Couple quick ones for Brooklyn, and they make it 7-3. And it's applicable to the storm outside when it rains, it pours now for Brooklyn. That's a couple of quick goals back to back. And what was a 3-2 start to the period is now a 7-3 lead for Brooklyn. As we see the pass get dumped off here and just cutting to the net, making the nice play for the second goal of the game. Zach Sunderland makes no mistake. As Cobert wins that draw. Cobert trying to set things up in the offensive zone. Get some momentum back as Luca Romano will work this one off for Alex Simmons. So we talked about that momentum shift at the end of period number one. And we see, see it carrying here midway through the second period as Carter McKenzie's shot gets blocked. And Mike Byrne will pick up the loose ball. Fresh 30-second shot clock. This time with all the regulars on the offensive end of the floor for Brooklyn. Kyle Waters steps in, spins off the defender, loses the ball. Sunderland couldn't find it. Now it's Peyton Cormier stepping in. His shot gets stopped by Orlman. And the ball's loose in the crease, picked up by Williams. Quick shot, and that gets stopped as well. Nice patience for Dyson Williams in front of the net, but Steve Orlman just got enough of that one to keep it out. Yeah, Dyson Williams acknowledging that the ball had to roll out of the crease. He couldn't touch it. He waited as long as he could. And very quickly got the ball into his, with his stick and then put the shot on net. Austin Murphy steps in and that one gets knocked away by Steve Orlman. Chris Willman slowing things down as James Whiteford joining Dyson Williams on the offensive end of the floor. Couldn't control that pass. Bounces into the crease. Murphy shoots, but his foot was in the crease. So that one won't count as he beats Steve Orlman. And Coburg setting up in the offensive zone once again. Keelan Pilon looking to break this streak from Brooklyn. Now Riley Curtis shoots. That one gets stopped. And John LaFontaine will pick up the loose ball. It was a great effort there from Cobra. That's their best chance in the last little while, the pass across and then the quick shot on net. But Hutchcraft with a great job coming across the crease and getting his big body in front of it. Zach Sunderland works this one back off to Ryan Lansbury. Flips it off, Dyson Williams steps in, stopped by Steve Orlman. How about that pass from Lansbury as Williams? Cut to the net. It's like those two guys have chemistry or something. Two pretty good players for Brooklyn who have been running the offensive end of the floor here tonight as Ben French was looking for a shovel pass for Keelan Pilon. Broken up by Jordy Jones-Smith. Ten seconds to shoot for French. Pilon behind the net with five to shoot. They Pilon the shoots and they did reset the shot clock as Simmons touched that one while it was still in the crease. So it'll be Brooklyn ball here. Peyton Cormier works it off for Kyle Waters. Ryan Lansbury off to Austin Murphy behind the back pass looking for Waters as he battles out in front of the net. Ball goes off to the boards and Whiteford couldn't find it. Joey Zabo 
Couldn't grab that loose ball for Coburg. And Austin Murphy will bring it back into the offensive end of the floor. Ryan Lansbury, open space in front. Orlman makes the save, but he scores. It got through Ryan Lansbury's second of the game, and it's 8-3 Brooklyn. A bit of confusion defensively there for the Kodiaks as we get a water break, and we'll take a look at that goal. I believe it was Murphy drawing two defenders away from the front of the net when Lansbury had the ball. As you'll see here, cutting out is Murphy, takes two defenders, and Lansbury takes advantage and just cuts to the net with nobody on him. You'll see it here, a good angle. Boop, sneaks, sneaks right by. And with an easy play on the net, Coburg's got to be better than that. Can't take two guys to take one guy that doesn't even have the ball. Lansbury had the ball and just took advantage of the empty floor. Now with six points in the game, Ryan Lansbury. Two goals, four assists on the night for him. Pulling him up to 31 points on the season. We have Orlman taking a long water break here. The official now coming over, and it looks like Chris Millman is waiting for Brooklyn. As you can see, he's, he's been waiting there, but Orlman's not even at his crease yet. We'll get things back underway here. 8-3 Brooklyn, just over midway through the second period. Oberg opened the scoring here tonight. But Brooklyn able to battle back and pick things up here. Cam Milligan fires his shot, bounces into the Coburg bench, so it'll be Brooklyn ball. It's going to be Dyson Williams. Taken to the floor with Lanchbury. Dyson Williams getting some space, goes to the net, but has that one knocked off his stick. And they'll say he stepped in the crease, so Doug Utting will get the restart for Coburg from his own zone. Joey Zabo works it off to Jackson Webster. Cam Milligan, Keelan Pilon. Steps into the middle, fires a shot that goes wide, picks up his own rebound. Now a pass in front for Milligan, and he stepped in the crease, so it'll be Brooklyn ball. Long stretch pass down the floor, but it goes right to Steve Orlman. Kyle Waters not in the vicinity. As Cam Milligan resets, Riley Curtis fires a shot. That gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Coburg trying to get something going at the offensive end of the floor, but Riley Hutchcraft standing tall in net for Brooklyn and getting some help on the offensive end as Dyson Williams behind the back shot goes wide. Ball bounces past Whiteford and away goes Tyler Halls. Halls steps in, Hutchcraft makes the save once again. Boisano flipped that one off and we'll get a change as Dyson Williams finds Peyton Cormier. Back to Williams. Zach Sunderland off to Williams. Dyson Williams steps in, kicked out by Steve Orlman. So Tyler Halls brings it back up the floor for Coburg as Ben French Works it off to Keelan Pilon. French maintains possession against Mitch Wild. Curtis Conley works it off to the boards. And now taken away by Brooklyn. And they'll slow things down at the offensive end of the floor. Jacob Saunders waiting for some help. Pass out in front. Whiteford gets stopped by Orlman. Coburg looking to strike quickly back the other end of the floor. Penalty coming up here against Brooklyn. So Coburg will be going to the power play for the first time here tonight. Riley Curtis 
Flips it off to Milligan. It'll be over and back. And Brooklyn will send him in to the penalty box. And Coburg will go to the power play. And as I was saying in the first intermission there, maybe that's what Coburg's got to try to do a bit more of is drawing some penalties. I believe it was a holding call. Not sure against who, but it looks like uh, Whitefield. James Whiteford is the guilty party. He takes a seat in the penalty box. Goaltenders getting a drink of water before they get restarted here. 5.15 to go here in period number two. 8-3 Brooklyn leading Coburg. Brooklyn with a win can pull themselves within one win of Peterborough in the standings. Yeah, come within one point of uh, Peterborough with a game in hand as well. Cam Milligan getting it set up for Coburg. Milligan worked it off to the middle. Simmons fired a shot, stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. Mitch Wild with some speed finds Austin Murphy. Murphy. Waiting for Zach Sunderland. Brooklyn's already taken 15 seconds off the shot clock and penalty clock here. Ryan Lansbury. To Dyson Williams. That gets stopped by Steve Orlman. We mentioned about the chemistry that those two have. Ryan Lansbury seeing Dyson Williams cutting to the net and another great chance for Dyson Williams. Already six points in this game for Ryan Lansbury looking for his seventh. That would have been his fifth assist of the game. Alex Simmons works it back for Milligan. Off the post! Coburn can't catch a break here in period number two. Keelan Pilon back to Milligan. Now a quick shot gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Jackson Webster looking to beat the Brooklyn goaltender, but he couldn't. Now Jacob Saunders can take this within 10 seconds of the Brooklyn penalty being over as Peyton Cormier has 10 seconds on the shot clock. Cormier gets a screen from Williams. Austin Murphy out in front, stepped in the crease. Steve Orlman made the save anyhow. So Coburg setting up in the offensive zone. Time expiring here on the power play for the Kodiak. So we're back to five on five as James Whiteford is back on the floor. Keelan Pilon couldn't control it. Riley Curtis finds it. Five to shoot for Coburg. Into the corner. Now to the net. Simmons driving in hard. And Riley Hutchcraft doesn't like that one and continues to push Simmons into the Brooklyn net. No penalties coming up there. So Matt Boisano brings it back up the floor for Brooklyn. Ryan Lanchbury looking for Sunderland. Dyson Williams fires a shot behind the back and Steve Orlman makes the save. And now a penalty coming up here to Coburg as Doug Udding giving, giving an extra cross check to Dyson Williams after the play. So Brooklyn is going to the power play up five with 2.42 to go in period number two. Yeah, Williams just trying to get away from the play and get to the bench for a change and get a defender on the floor. And as you said it, it was letting that wasn't really let him, letting him go. Ryan Lanchbury off to Kyle Waters and the clock never started. So they'll have to reset things here again. So they get the clock started here. Austin Murphy with Ryan Lanchbury, Kyle Waters, Dyson Williams, Peyton Cormier. Dyson Williams gets the screen, shoots and scores. 
He's been looking for that second of the game for quite a while. He finds it there, his 19th of the season. A power play marker makes it 9-3 Brooklyn. Another power play goal tonight for Brooklyn. That one, Williams once again here. He'll get the ball and then just carry it, carry it, lose, use Waters as a bit of a pick and gets an open lane and fires it on net and he's pumped up. You see him with that fist bump. Woo, there he goes. As well as, as well as he's played here tonight, you feel like there's some frustration yep. because he's gotten so many good looks that Steve Oroman's made the save on, and it seems like yeah. Steve Oroman's only making those big saves against Dyson Williams. So it feels like a lot of that frustration coming out on that shot from yeah. Dyson. You, you nailed it on the head there. It's just Dyson Williams with chance after chance after chance and just keep getting stopped. So every time he's cracked it to tonight now, you know, it means a lot more after that frustration that he's that he's fighting through. We have a wet area on the floor, so they get the mop out to clean things up. 2.20 to go in period number two. 9-3 Brooklyn. Four multi-goal scorers in this game. Peyton Cormier with two, Ryan Lanchbury with two to go along with multiple assists. Dyson Williams with two, Zach Sunderland with two, and Ryan Barnable picking up that ninth goal for Brooklyn as Dyson Williams finds the rebound on the missed shot attempt. Zach Sunderland. Works this one off to Ryan Lanchbury. Lanchbury up top to Dyson Williams looking for the hat trick, but Steve Orlman makes the save. Six goals in this middle frame here for Brooklyn. Just the one for Coburg as Pilon gets stopped by Hutchcraft. LaFontaine works it up the floor, and now Brooklyn back into the offensive zone with Zach Young. Young finds Peyton Cormier. Cormier steps in, gets a screen, looking for a shooting lane. That one gets blocked. Went off Kyle Waters and into the stand, so it'll be Coburg ball with a minute 13 to go here in the second period. Curtis Conley. Stepping away from Mike Byrne. Now Justin Lee steps in, kicked out by Hutchcraft. Brooklyn finds the loose ball back in their own zone. Mike Byrne. Works it into the corner as Brooklyn setting up again. Lansbury fires. That one gets stopped by Steve Orlman. Transition chance for Coburg. That one gets stopped by Hutchcraft as Chris Weir made the save. Timeout called by Brooklyn. 26 on the game clock, so shot clock turns off. Brooklyn will have the final shot of period number two. Yeah, final shot coming up. A bit of a water break for the goaltenders who both uh, are taking their time. As you get a, a look there at Mitch Wild and the two goaltenders there, giving a bit of a fist pump in the effort so far today. Not easy being a goaltender in lacrosse, let me tell you, the ball, that would kill. It gets you in the wrong spot. That's not, it's not exactly pleasant to receive that one, so they both know what each other are going through. Chatting it up now <laughs> at the bench as well. Doesn't come in slow either. No. Sometimes you don't even see it. Can't even prepare for it, so. <laughs> but they sign up for that. As you said, 26 seconds left here. Brooklyn timeout. We'll work the ball from their side of the floor and it'll be pretty easy as Kohlberg is preparing to take it defensively here. Riley Hutchcraft will start on the bench on the restart. Kyle Waters from his own zone. James Whiteford, Dyson Williams, Peyton Cormier, Austin Murphy, Ryan Lanchbury on the floor. So the big guns out for the final shot of period number two. Ball gets over the timeline and they'll wait a couple seconds before they start working it around and get a shot away. 
Waters to Lansbury. Ryan Lansbury into the middle, works it off. James Whiteford shoots, and that gets stopped by Steve Ullman right at the end of period number two. It was 3-2 Brooklyn after 20 minutes of play. We're through 40 here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. It's 9-3 Brooklyn, a six-goal outburst in period number two, and holding Coburg to just one. They look to hold on in the final 20 minutes of play here to take their fourth victory of the season. We'll have highlights and analysis of period number two when we come back. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. It isn't the heavy trays that make the job difficult or the fast pace you need to keep up. It's not working another double because someone called in sick. What makes the job tough is the moment you realize a customer has had enough and you have to make that decision not to overserve. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. We know it's not easy, but we're counting on you to keep us all safe. Thank you, servers, for doing the tough job. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. I was born and raised in Musqueam First Nation territory by my mother who spoke Hunt Kaminam to me. As a child, I ceased using my mother tongue as to use any language other than English was considered not being Canadian, so I was told. The old people came to me in a dream and reminded me of who I am and where I come from. I have reawakened. My roots are strong and I'm no longer a silent speaker. My language tells me where I'm from. It defines me and guides me to teach others to learn and understand our culture and tradition. A gift for those in the present and the unborn generation. What was lost is found. What was asleep has awakened. My blood is here and I am complete. I have returned home. Welcome back to Whippy as Brooklyn exploded for six goals in that second period to take a 9-3 lead over the Coburg Kodiaks through 40 minutes of play. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond along with you. Andrew, real big period, real big momentum boost there for Brooklyn in that middle frame. Yeah, six to one were the goals in favor of Brooklyn where we sit nine to three after 40 minutes of play. And it was, you know, some power play chances for Brooklyn that worked out well. Five on five, defensive effort, great goaltending, kind of everything going Brooklyn's way in the latter half of that segment. As we take a look at the highlights from period number two, and really it was all Brooklyn in that middle frame as Peyton Cormier gets us started. Yeah, Peyton Cormier, his second goal of the game on a similar play, actually, using that big frame of his to drive to the net. But then, you know, it was Coburg. They were in this game up until, you know, the the uh, fourth goal or so of Brooklyn. They were battling back. They had the lead and then tied it up a couple times. Ryan Lanchbury, we'll talk more about him coming up in this intermission. And then a nice 2 on 0 there. Good chance Ryan Barnable makes no mistake, using LaFontaine as a bit of a distraction. And then Murphy dumps that one off to Sunderland for his second goal of the contest. And then again here, Ryan Lanchbury just taking advantage of Murphy on the drawing two defenders and clear cut to the net makes no mistake there. Kyle Waters picks the play here, clears some room for Dyson Williams and that fist pump there. He's ready to go for a second goal of the contest. And that's where we stand after two periods. Massive explosion of offense there from Brooklyn. They carry that momentum heading into the third period. A 9-3 lead over Coburg, who just has that one win on the season. We'll have plenty more coming up for you next in our intermission. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV.
am God Gwege. My name means everything. Tom Longboats! I am Wolf Clan, Onondaga Nation. I've run many different races. I've run to survive and to be free. I've run to win for honor. These people might be lazy, but this one's damn fast. My people respected our runners, people who carried important messages from village to village. I need a guide to the next post. Dispatch carrier, sir. I can get you there. God sakes, that! Slow down. Who do you think I am? Tom Longboat? No, sir. I am. Running makes me feel alive. It's everything. Tom Lombo was the first indigenous person to win the Boston Marathon. He ran his way to international fame and became an inspiration to generations of athletes. fit think again i'm personal trainer karen ross specializing in 55 plus fitness my mission is to help you find your way back to health and wellness i'll give you the knowledge and the power to take control of your own fitness path everyone deserves quality of life for their entire life tune into a little bit fit with me karen ross here on rogers tv Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, Brooklyn leading Coburg 9-3 in Major Series Lacrosse action on Rogers TV. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond along with you. And Andrew, we'd be remiss if not to mention in this intermission the guy who has had probably the best game so far of any player on the floor, Ryan Lanchbury. Yesterday signed with the Georgia Swarm officially, of course, he was the second overall draft pick in 2021 of the Georgia Swarm in the NLL. He elected to go back to Richmond, all-time leading scorer in Richmond Spiders history, 150 goals, 120 assists, 270 points, and now has seven points in this game through two periods of play with Brooklyn against Coburg. And, and I think he's celebrating basically the signing of the NLL contract tonight. He's sitting, as you mentioned, there with seven points. He's done that three times in his career here in the MSL. One time actually coming as a member of Oakville against Brooklyn. Two others against Coburg, he's done that. So one more point for that guy. He'll get eight points, and that'll be the first time in his career he's got eight points in a single game. So look for him to work that ball around. He's got five assists today, two goals. He's part of seven of the nine goals for Brooklyn. So it might not be a goal from him, most likely an assist because he's that distributor. And with Dyson Williams, two goals today. Look for him to get the hat trick, maybe on a Lanchbury assist. We'll see what happens. One of the best dynamic playmakers in major series lacrosse, Ryan Lanchbury, two goals and five assists. Can he break his own streak in the third period? We'll find out next. You're watching major series lacrosse on Rogers TV. The law states a boater must carry up-to-date charts in the largest scale available for the body of water on which they are boating. Nautical marine charts are available for all charted waterways across Canada. Mobile navigation apps can also be a good navigation aid. If you are using an app or electronic charts, it's a good idea to carry paper charts as well. They are a good backup in case of a power failure. Two title fights. 
Your visit isn't really necessary. I'll judge for myself. I know you're an MP, Miss McPhail, but a woman has never... I am not leaving till I do. be called civilized. If those appalling conditions don't change, that prison will explode! Perhaps our lone lady member is too fragile to know what is normal in a prison. Is this normal? Her courage would lead to the overhaul of the entire Canadian penal system. Agnes McPhail, Canada's first woman MP. Getting you set for the third period here in Whippy. Brooklyn leading 9-3 against Coburg through 40 minutes of play. We talked about Ryan Lanchbury in that intermission, Andrew, but also the play of some other guys, Zach Sunderland with two goals in this one, Peyton Cormier with two goals in this one, Dyson Williams also has two for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Yeah, two goals all around as we take a look. You see him right there, Ryan Lanchbury will be watching him today, but you mentioned it. A bunch of other players with two goals on the night, so maybe he'll distribute, make someone a hat-trick player today. So there you see it. The previous games and the one there today, July 20th, 2022, where he scored seven points once again. Will he make it eight? He has one period, 20 minutes left to do it to break his own record. Coburg trying to rally back. If Brooklyn can score six in the middle frame, why can't Coburg score six here in the third and make this one a contest? Brooklyn Lacrosse Club doing a very good job here tonight, keeping Coburg at bay. And Coburg, four-team league, but quite noticeably in last place in goals for this season. They haven't come easily to this Coburg Kodiaks team. So they're going to try and score six in this third period, but you mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, Andrew, they haven't scored six in a game since their 10-8 win against Six Nations. No, they haven't, and it's not looking good for them at three right now with only one period left to go. And, you know, you look down the schedule, they got two more games remaining in this season, and the next game comes again against Brooklyn. You've already dropped two, and right now you're facing down a third straight loss to Brooklyn. And then you got to face them once again in the back-to-back. -back. And they, I think they called an over and back there. So violation against Steve Orlman, who didn't like it from the official, letting him know about it. But it will be Brooklyn Ball in the offensive end of the floor. So Kyle Waters gets things set up. Peyton Cormier steps in to the net, stepped in the crease. It'll be Coburg Ball as we are on Ryan Lanchbury watch <laughs> to see if he can break his own single game point record. Nice save there by Riley Hutchcraft and Mike Byrne back up the floor and Ryan Lanchbury takes the ball. Ryan Lanchbury, backhand pass to Austin Murphy, picks it up in the corner. John Kitt takes it away for the Kodiaks and he'll bring it up the floor. But that gets taken away and Lansbury takes over. Now Murphy fires a shot kicked out by Orlman. A lot of the call-up players for Cobra here tonight playing junior lacrosse this season, whether it be Junior A, a few players with St. Catharines, one player with Mimico, Junior B with the Junior Gales in Clarington. And then a, a few senior B players. So a lot of young guys getting the experience of playing co with Coburg here tonight. I'm going to prove to the coaching staff that maybe in the future mm -hmm. to give them a couple extended looks at making the club full time. Chris Willman gets hit but maintains possession as he goes into the offensive zone. Zach Sunderland. Off to Ryan Lanchbury. Lanchbury 
Steps in, that shot gets blocked and goes wide into the crowd. Went off of Coburg, so it stays Brooklyn ball with a fresh 30 seconds. So Lanchbury gets the restart in the corner in the offensive zone. Flips that one off to Sunderland. Now Peyton Cormier. Back to Lanchbury. Ryan Lanchbury. Waits as he gets checked by Chris Weir. Flips that one off, looking to get it back himself. Lanchbury finds it in behind the Coburg net. Backhand pass, Dyson oh. Williams scores! Incredible pass, incredible goal. Dyson Williams goes behind the back. Ryan Lanchbury with his eighth point of the game. It's 10-3 Brooklyn. And what a way to celebrate that contract on a play like that. You break your own career record. You see that bit of a smile. It was a behind the back pass from Lanchbury right here. Boop, and then behind the back from Williams. Whoop, there you go, 10-3 Brooklyn. Couple incredible dynamic players connecting once again. Hat-trick goal for Dyson Williams. Eighth point of the game for Ryan Lanchbury. And they don't come much prettier than that one. <laughs> they really don't. You, maybe the pass is like that or the shot is like that, but both like that late in the shot clock from behind the net to make something out of almost nothing. It's gotta be those two guys for Brooklyn. Lanchbury and Dyson Williams. So this ball goes all the way into the Coburg zone, so the Kodiaks will restart from their own end of the floor. Now a chance for Coburg is streaking to the net was Nick Ellerton, but he lost it after being checked by Carter McKenzie. Keelan Pilon fires his shot that goes wide. Curtis Conley. Works it off to Riley Curtis. Keelan Pilon driving in on Mitch Wild. Stopped by Riley Hutchcraft. So now that lead extended to seven for Brooklyn here. The big guns getting it done again. And Ryan Lanchbury, Dyson Williams back on the floor for Brooklyn. Kyle Waters off to Lanchbury. In the middle to James Whiteford. Nobody could find it, so Steve Orlman traps it down and works it back up the floor for Coburg. Riley Curtis off to Cam Milligan. Pass in front. Curtis gets it back, stepped in the crease. It'll be Brooklyn ball. Barnable off to Zach Sunderland. He's got two in this one. Finds Kyle Waters, Austin Murphy. Now Peyton Cormier. Cormier steps away from the defender, now driving to the net. He's got two in this one, looking for a third. Cormier holds with five to shoot. Cormier's pass for Waters gets deflected off to Whiteford. Shot clock expires. It'll be Coburg ball. Cam Milligan and Keelan Pilon back on the floor. Alex Simmons. Back to Cam Milligan. The captain works it off to Simmons. Now up top, Pilon. Jackson Webster to Milligan. That cross floor pass goes wide, and Justin Lee was looking for it, but it was the end of the shot clock, so Chris Willman will take over for Brooklyn. Justin Lee took a tumble down in the Brooklyn zone as Waters drives to the net, stopped by Orlman. And they will wipe down yeah. that area of the floor where Lee took a tumble. Yeah. It looked like he was close enough to Willman where he would have hit him, but it was just he slipped <laughs> with his footing and took a hard fall down to the floor. Yeah, and I think the Coburg bench was hoping for a bit of a call there behind the play, but the official, as you see him right there, <laughs> watching the mop up. Saw it as, as it was, and getting a bit of a cheer heading off the floor here in Brooklyn. Mitchie on the mop here <laughs> in Brooklyn. As Ben French will restart things back in the Coburg zone. Steve Orlman makes his way back to the net for the Coburg Kodiaks. 
Ben French into the offensive end. Stepped around Jordy Jones-Smith. Now Ryan McCrory looking to get a check. That one works off to Pilon. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft. Now Milligan shoots. Hutchcraft with another save. And it's Brooklyn ball again. And a great save there by Hutchcraft going out to get that ball. Realizing he was going a bit to his other side, he kicked out that left leg and made the stop. Matt Boisano worked it off for Peyton Cormier. Now Austin Murphy. Murphy to Lanchbury. He gets checked, and Steve Orlman will corral that one. And impressive from Riley Hutchcraft. We haven't talked much about him here tonight, but he allows that opening goal of the game and the mental resilience to... Mm -hmm keep his team in this one. He's made a few big saves in that first period when it was close. Brooklyn took that 3-2 lead, but that shot goes in. Alex Simmons able to bury his second of the game and get Coburg back on the board. Yeah, and just as you're giving some praise there to Hutchcraft with the resilience, it was Alex Simmons cutting towards the middle of the of the floor here and just outside the crease you'll see it he'll get the pass there on your right side bottom here just cuts in uses a bit of a screen and distraction from the Brooklyn defenders and throws that one on net a bit surprisingly to Riley Hutchcraft a couple now that I think he's probably wanted back he's had a good game but there's been a couple tonight where he's hasn't been able to stop at point blank quite like that one so Coburg now with possession once again in the offensive zone Trying to get back-to-back -back goals here after they stop that run from Brooklyn. The pass for Jackson Webster goes off the boards and Ryan McCrory brings it up for Brooklyn. McCrory waits for Ryan Lanchbury. Two goals, six assists in this one for Lanchbury. Zach Sunderland. Works it off for James Whiteford into the corner. Lanchbury plays it off the board. Six to shoot as he gets taken down hard into the boards. And Coburg takes it away. And another turnover forced. And Whiteford was confused as to what was happening. It'll be Brooklyn ball. It looked like Coburg was screaming for a, a new shot clock after... A turnover had been forced. Whiteford wanted a violation, and now Cormier steps in, shoots that one wide, and Lanchbury picks up the rebound. Dyson Williams fires a shot, kicked out by Whirlman. Kyle Waters off to Ryan Lanchbury. Peyton Cormier. Working against Conley. Cormier shoots. That goes high over and back against Brooklyn. It'll be Coburg ball. Keelan Pilon driving to the net hard and a penalty coming up here. Chris Willman will go to the box for holding. So Coburg will go back to the power play. Seven minutes, 27 seconds gone here in period number three. Coburg, who scored to make it 10-4, looking to pull themselves back within five. And we'll take a bit of a water break here and a bit of a mop up job, and you'll see it here just getting over the top and a bit aggressive there and holding and hauling down the player was Chris Willman. And he's gonna serve two minutes or less here. Coburg with yet another power play, haven't scored yet on a power play. They did get a shorthanded goal. Peyton Cormier's been another dynamic player for Brooklyn here tonight. As we take a look at what he's been able to do offensively, of course, two goals, still looking for that third one. But he's been a dynamic offensive mm -hmm. player as Ryan Lansbury and Dyson Williams have taken up much of the conversation. Can't forget about Peyton Cormier, who sets up in the offensive zone on the top unit for Brooklyn as well. Yeah, he's also got one assist in the game here. He's getting a lot of time as well with the big guys, Williams and Lanchbury. Jordy Jones-Smith found the loose ball, took it away. Now a new shot clock here for Coburg. 90 seconds still on the power play. Couple shot attempts early 
in this power play. Haven't been able to hit the net as Simmons steps in, worked it out for Pilon. Back to Simmons. That shot goes wide again. Ball bounces high. John LaFontaine couldn't find it. Milligan battling for it in the corner. One second left on the shot clock. It will expire, so it's Brooklyn ball. So they can take this thing down to 30 seconds left in the penalty against Chris Willman if they don't take a shot. And look who they're sending on, Peyton Cormier, the man we just mentioned here, looking for three. And they'll take their time here shorthanded, maybe work it through him as his first two goals came on a little solo effort drive to the net. Austin Murphy still looking for his first of the game as Whiteford into the middle for Dyson Williams. Shot clock expired before he could get a shot away. But Brooklyn did what they needed to do there, killed off as much time as possible. <laughs> as Coburg back on the offensive end of the floor, Alex Simmons with Cam Milligan. Milligan. Down low for Pilon. Works that one off for Lee. Taken away by Brooklyn. Mike Byrne. Lost possession as the ball bounces back in the Brooklyn zone. And Wilman fresh out of the box. And Brooklyn unable to get it over center within the eight second count. So it's Coburg ball. Riley Curtis resets things for Coburg. Webster off for Pilon. Now Simmons again. Alex Simmons. Works it into the middle. Pilon shoots. That gets stopped by Hutchcraft. And now they will mop the floor once again in an area where looked like Zach Young took a spill back in the Brooklyn end. Just the excessive heat here yeah. in the arena. Players sweating so much, spilling onto the floor. Got a few more of those slippery patches out there. Yep. And another applause from the Brooklyn bench. <laughs> you see it there on your screen. This is now the sixth time that Coburg's given up at least eight goals. Simmons drove to the net. He stepped in the crease. Hutchcraft made the save anyhow. And now Wilman and Simmons going at it. Roger Nurse, the Referee separating the two. And Matt Boisano brings it back up the floor with Zach Sunderland. Peyton Cormier looking for that hat trick goal. Driving himself towards the net. Backhand shot gets stopped. Lansbury steps in. That one got blocked as well. Sunderland after the ball. And he'll pick it up. Now Cormier. He steps in, tried to go top corner. He missed, but Ryan Lynch were able to grab it and slow things down. Ten to shoot for Brooklyn. Ryan Lynchbury rips a shot that goes high and wide. And this ball bounces right in front of the Coburg bench. It'll be over and back against Brooklyn. Shot clock expired at the same time as Conley fires a shot. Hutchcraft made the save and traps it in the crease. Wild worked it off for Dyson Williams. That pass goes awry, and away goes Joey Zabo. He's got a breakaway for Coburg. Zabo in. He scores. First of the season for Joey Zabo. And Coburg is within five. It's 10 5 Brooklyn with 8.35 to go in the third period. Yeah, and it's just an errant pass in the offensive zone for Brooklyn. and. Zabo is able to get it, and we can't see him there. He's on the left side there. He scores there. Just squeaks in. You'll see it a couple fakes here just outside the crease and gets that one in to get the lead to five, or the deficit, I should say, in Coburg's point of view. Deficit to five. This is 10-5 now for Brooklyn. Just over eight and a half minutes to go in the third period. 
Brooklyn looking for their fourth win of the season to pull them back up to 500. Three, four, and one on the year so far. Tenth game of the season for Coburg. They're one and eight on the year. That one win coming against the top-ranked Six Nations Chiefs. And Six Nations, that's their only loss on their resume so far. The only other blemish, that tie against Brooklyn 10-10 at Six Nations a few weeks ago. But other than that, they've been able to run the table, including a win against Peterborough last night. And shot clock expires on Coburg. Brooklyn last week proving that they can handle the Peterborough Lakers as well. So really, for this Brooklyn team, we mentioned it earlier, it's about putting it all together and winning those tight games against those two opponents at the top of the standings. Yeah, taking care of business once again here against Coburg. But then staying in those other games against Peterborough, getting some wins there, and then also staying in it with uh, the Six Nation Chiefs. Alex Simmons gets it from Ben French. Justin Lee couldn't control the pass, but finds it as it bounces. Ben French won't get a shot away before the shot clock expires. Lost position anyhow, and Ryan McCrory brings it back up the floor. Mike Byrne setting things up for Brooklyn. Byrne. Worked it off to Sunderland as the ball bounced in the offensive zone for Brooklyn, and Coburg gets it right back under seven to play here in the third. A chance for the Kodiaks, but that one gets stopped by Riley Hutchcraft on the shot from Tyler Halls. Dyson Williams fresh off the bench, fires. Oralman makes the save, and Coburg quickly plays it up the floor. And Brooklyn now splitting up a bit of the big guys, uh, Lanchbury and Williams on separate lines the last couple of possessions. Jackson Webster worked it off for Alex Simmons. Simmons steps around Willman. Now back up top for Riley Curtis, but that gets taken away by Boisano and the shot, the end of the shot clock goes wide of Riley Hutchcraft, so it'll be Brooklyn Ball. James Whiteford sets up with Kyle Waters. Lanchbury gets a screen from Sunderland. Lanchbury shoots, that one goes high, and over and back will be called against Brooklyn. Just looking to cap off his, got cap off his big night with a hat trick. How good would that be to go yeah. along with your six assists to put up three goals as well? We mentioned it in the intermission, 150 goals and 120 assists with the Richmond Spiders. Oh, As Curtis Conley lost his helmet and is down on the floor. And a penalty coming up here against Brooklyn. Zach Young will get the call. And it looks like uh, Connolly was mixing it up before. And Lafontaine there making sure that Connolly's all right. As we see Zach Young head to the box. Coburg going to the power play once again. Haven't been able to convert so far tonight. 5.45 to go in the third, down by five. It's a five minute major going against Zach Young. So until 45 seconds left in this one, Coburg will be on the power play. So this could be just a swing of momentum Coburg needs to nibble away at that lead that Brooklyn has. Cam Milligan works this one off as Simmons fires a shot. Hutchcraft makes the save and Mitch Wild finds the rebound. Wild across the timeline. Set things up in the offensive zone. Still 20 seconds on the shot clock. Zach Sunderland. Trying to keep it away from Luca Romano. 
And Sunderland taken down to the floor, plays it into the corner. That will reset the shot clock as Coburg will have to go the length of the floor. Well, you got a five minute major here, which means Zach Young stand in there for four minutes and 13 seconds longer, regardless of what happens. So Coburg get a couple here pretty quickly in these next two possessions. Cam Milligan shoots, that one gets stopped by Hutchcraft. And Coburg will be able to corral it before it reached mid floor. A fresh shot clock here for the Kodiaks. Pilon, off to Simmons, back to Pilon. Now Cam Milligan has to play it off the boards. Simmons, back to Milligan, now Pilon. Jacob Saunders playing defense for Brooklyn, takes Pilon down to the floor, and Brooklyn takes it away. Saunders up the floor, has Dyson Williams fresh off the bench. Dyson Williams steps in between the legs, stopped by Steve Orlman. And now Dyson Williams getting caught up with Jackson Webster at the offensive end of the floor, as Keelan Pilon still slow to get back to the Coburg bench. Dyson Williams and Jackson Webster tied up back in the Coburg zone. Referees trying to separate them. Four minutes to go in the third period. The last thing you want if you're Brooklyn is A, any type of injury or any kind of supplemental discipline mm -hmm. to go against Dyson Williams down the stretch of the season as he was tied up with one of the call-up players for Coburg, Jackson Webster. And now Murphy's given Webster a earful as we take a look at where this kind of all started, at least from Coburg's point of view. You see around back of the net here, a slash there on the left hand, just got the wrong spot. It was Jacob Sanders. And then Williams maybe showboating a bit there, going through the legs with a big lead and some points already tonight. Taking an exception, as you mentioned, is Jackson Webster. Didn't really like Williams with that between the legs attempt on net, just grabbing his cage. And Williams has the height difference on him there, so not sure that was a great call by Webster to try to pick a fight with that guy, but uh, he's trying to send a message nonetheless, because as I was alluding to earlier, these two teams will meet once again in their next matchup. That comes this Sunday in Coburg, so, you know, see if some of this spills over, and we see, I believe it's LaFontaine and Milligan discussing things as they head towards the bench. So things getting a bit uh, boisterous here. So it'll stay five on four as the referees were talking to the coaches here. And Brooklyn's bench wanted a call against Jackson Webster because they feel that that scrum started because of the cross check to the hip by Jackson Webster on Dyson Williams. I'll have to get the clock restarted here. There's four minutes to go here in the third. And the only penalty that should be on the board is that five minute major to Zach Young. Still has three minutes and 15 seconds left on it. As they get started here. Cam Milligan works it around with Ben French. Riley Curtis, now Milligan gets it back to Curtis. Alex Simmons, off to French. Now Milligan with the shooting lane, fires it wide. And the rebound picked up by Mike Byrne as he works it down the floor for Jacob Saunders. Saunders, looking for Whiteford off the bench, finds Murphy. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Still that five minute major against Zach Young. 10-5 Brooklyn with 3.08 to go in the third period. Ryan Lanchbury steps around the defender. Lanchbury just plays it into the corner as the shot clock expires. So Coburg has the full end of the floor to go on the restart. And maybe we'll see one more time. Lanchbury takes the floor to try to get that third of the game and cap off a career night for him. Alex Simmons off for Cam Milligan, found a shooting lane, but fired it over the net and over and back cold against the Cobra Kodiaks. Cam 
James Whiteford will set up in the offensive zone for Brooklyn with a fresh shot clock. Still a minute 53 to go on that Coburg power play. Whiteford working against Tyler Halls. Whiteford works it off for Sunderland. He's got two in this one. Ryan McCrory on the offensive end of the floor, so is Kyle Waters. As the shot clock about to expire, ball played into the corner, and Coburg will get the restart. Keelan Pilon works it off for Riley Curtis. Pilon back for Simmons. Milligan, now Simmons, back to Pilon. Riley Curtis, Pilon off to Simmons. Gets the screen from Lee and finds Milligan. Now backdoor play, but Riley Hutchcraft comes across and makes a nice save. One of his better stops of the night comes really late in the game with such a big lead here. Saunders works this one off to Murphy. Ryan Lanchbury back on the floor. As, like you mentioned, we're on Lanchbury watch. He's already hit that eight-point mark, which is a personal career high. Two goals in this one, six assists, looking for that hat-trick goal as he controls on the side. Lanchbury rips a shot that goes wide at the end of the shot clock, so it'll be Coburg ball, 26 seconds to go in the power play. Minute 11 to go here in the third period. 10-5, Brooklyn leading Coburg. Major series lacrosse on Rogers TV. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond along with you from the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby. Our great crew here at Rogers TV. Keelan Pilon off to Simmons, stopped by Hutchcraft. Now Byrne finds the rebounds and rolls it off to Boisano. Matt Boisano slows things down. And Zach Young out of the penalty box for Brooklyn. We're back to five on five. Game clock and shot clock off by 17 seconds. Sunderland looking for the hat trick as the restart will go the way of Brooklyn. So the shot clock will be turned off as Brooklyn has the final possession as McCrory knocks it down. But that one gets taken away by Coburg and rolls down the floor. There's a chance here for Nick Webb, but his shot goes wide and bounces into the benches with 12 seconds to go here in this one. So it was Coburg getting the first goal of the game. Brooklyn outscoring Coburg from that point on 10 to four and will pick up their fourth win of the season. A big 10-5 victory over the Coburg Kodiak. Their third victory against Coburg this season. And Ryan Lanchbury is your first star of the game. A career night, two goals, six assists to celebrate that new contract with Georgia in the NLL. Unbelievable performance here from Ryan Lanchbury in the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And look at that, 22 points now in four career games against Coburg here in the MSL. And he'll look to increase that as these two teams will square off once again on Sunday in Coburg in the Kodiak's home barn. But yeah, tonight it's all about Lanchbury. But look at Brooklyn, fourth one of the year. They climb within one point of the Peterborough Lakers for second in the league. And they have a game in hand over those Lakers. So they're in it for that second seed and we'll see what happens. But next up is Coburg and Brooklyn once again on Sunday. Big matchup there, and Brooklyn trying to climb up into second place is Steve Orlman, the goaltender for Coburg. Riley Hutchcraft, a very strong performance in net for Brooklyn in this one, keeping his team in it all night long after conceding that first goal of the game. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club win this one 10-5. The next time we'll be at the Iroquois Park Sports Center is next Wednesday night. The Peterborough Lakers back in town, and if Brooklyn can win that game on Sunday against Coburg, that one has huge playoff implications. Of course, we'll have opening face-off at 8 p.m. You can join us here on Rogers TV Durham. For Andrew Osmond, our incredible crew here at Rogers TV, I'm Jack Moore saying good night from Whippy.